True love, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, boys. Got the tickets. Come on now. Uploading. We're gonna get it done, everyone. We're gonna get it done. There's the, some of the juniors back there chilling. I made it on the plane. The vlog is published. Oh, I edited late into the night and then had to finish on the bus right here. The battery died, the laptop battery died. Wrapped it up inside the airport and uh, hit publish about two minutes ago before boarding the plane to Buenos Aires. So we did it. What a trip. I'm gonna get you all the race details, break down the race, what happened out there in the mud. And yesterday with the uh, USA long course team, just an epic day. But I must say, probably gonna take a nap right now. Probably gonna take a nap right now. All right, see you in Buenos Aires. I just want to mention that yesterday's race vlog from the long course. Um, I'm I'm one person, and it breaks my heart that I don't have enough help to film the women's race. Okay, so to all the young girls out there that uh, you know there's I know that there's parents that send me messages and they say hey don't forget about the young ladies out there that watch the channel well keep dreaming you are mountain runners as well and someday as the channel continues to grow and basically I hope to have enough you know resources to be able to fly a couple other videographers to these races around the world and film these races for the men and the women so I just want to point that out right now Shout out to all the young uh, ladies out there. Keep dreaming too. You can be a mountain runner as well because it was an epic day. And uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that. Okay, now I got to transfer airports. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Cheers, YouTube family. We have earned it this year. Oh man, what a year we have had. I know it's not over yet, but uh, my racing season is done, just so you know, but mm, kicking back to some Pilsner from Patagonia. All right, the cerveza was delicious. I haven't had a beer in a long time, so that was amazing. All right, here we go, everyone. I'm gonna break down the race for you as concise as possible, uh, but just so you know, I'm tired slept about two maybe three hours last night so I if my if my mind is not there that is why also uh, if the audio sounds a little bit off yesterday when I was hitchhiking to get back to the finish line at the long course uh, race uh, I jumped out of the truck and the battery pack from my lavalier microphone fell off and I went back and found the battery but it had been run over by a car so that is why the audio sounds a little off right now I'm using a shotgun microphone okay let's dive in First of all, just so you know, the next uh, World Mountain Running Championships are in the Canary Islands. That's right, the Canary Islands are part of Spain and just off of the African coast. So that's pretty exciting. That's in 2020, I think October 2020. Um, so I'm gonna share my thoughts on the race as far as lessons that I learned. And I'm glancing down at a few notes. I wanna make sure I don't miss anything. Um, let's start with lesson number one. What am I always saying, like for confidence going into a race, preview the course and preferably preview the correct course. Um, not good, everyone. <laughs> we did not preview the correct uh, section of the course. So the gun goes off, we leave the starting area. It's, um, I thought we had about a mile and a half. Remember I was saying before the race about a mile and a half to two miles before we hit the trails, that actually ended up being closer to, I would say about 1K. Uh, that was, you know, it's my own fault for not studying the course maps close enough. It was a little confusing, all the course markings, because there's three different courses in that town. There was the junior course, the short course, which is what I did, 
or the classic course it's called, and then the long course, which is what I filmed yesterday with Jim and Hayden. Um, so bottom line, that was lesson number one is, uh, I remember what else I said is, um, go. I wanted to go out hard and go out fast off the starting line. And I glanced down at my watch and my watch said, at the half mile mark that we were running, it, it, I can't remember, it either said 440 a mile or 450 a mile. So we were not loafing around. I wasn't loafing off the starting line, but it just wasn't fast enough. Um, so therefore, that was lesson number one. Make sure, make sure, especially like in a foreign country, I just wasn't, I didn't, I didn't nail it. And there's no one else to blame but myself. So anyway, that's lesson number one. Because what happened was we ended up in a bottleneck and you saw it there on the screen right now, like we ended up in a bottleneck and I was in like 35th or 38th, between 35th and 40th place when I should have been around 15th place because we got, I got caught up. So anyway, there you go. Um, moving on, obviously the rain was a big situation. The mud was a big situation. Uh, I guess lesson number two is that, <laughs> uh, well, check the weather. I, I wish I would have packed more shoe options. So Joe Gray, who ended up winning the race from the United States, he wore the Hoka Jaws, spelled J-A-W-Z. I honest, I, I don't own the Jaws, but I frankly wish I would have had more bite. I was wearing the Solomon S Lab Sense 7 SG. The SG helped, that stands for soft ground, meaning the traction is supposed to do well in muddy conditions. It was, it was a mess. So I wish I would have packed, honestly, I wish the Innovate mud claw shoe that you've seen and actually it's on your screen right now um i wish that shoe is not quite a racing shoe it's not a racing shoe it's too heavy a little too stiff uh, but i wish the grip of the innovate mud claw would have been on my feet on friday so that's lesson number two um, as you know we did five miles of climbing up 2500 feet of vertical gain uh, my legs they're tired you know there's no other way to get around that they're tired from amsterdam and new york so I didn't have the pop in my legs on the climbing up. Um, and it, yeah, I didn't have the pop like I did in New Hampshire, which is the race I ran to qualify for this world race. Um, in New Hampshire, I felt, remember, don't fight it, float it when it comes to running uphill. I was fighting the mountain on Friday, definitely fighting it every step of the way on the uphill. Um, so that was a little, that was a mental challenge. Um, I wasn't shocked that it happened based on the last month of everything that's gone on, but um, so um, you get to the top, and I guess this is lesson number three. You get to the top, and I'm in, you know, like 35th place approximately, and I'm just like, ah, oh, this is not going the way I had hoped at the World Mountain Running Championships, so I had to adapt to the situation, and for that, um, I said, okay, time to see if I can make up ground. Now, I think I've mentioned in the past that I am not a, I don't consider myself to be a great downhill runner, but I feel like I really actually committed to running really as fast as I possibly could on the downhill, despite the mud. And um, I don't think I fell completely on the downhill, uh, but I just, that was my strength actually in this race. So I tried mentally, and this is number three, Adaptation is key, okay? That's lesson number three. At, when the race is not going your way, you have to make a mental check-in and say, I've got, I've got to adapt to what happened. Because, and especially, it's a team competition here. So even though I was not individually having a great race, I'm fighting for the other guys uh, from the United States. So I said, I need, to get my, I need to get my button gear here and start running downhill as fast as I possibly could. And I think I actually did pretty well. I think one guy passed me, but he and I worked together for the next, um, well, yeah, about the next two and a half miles before he kind of, he took off even more. And, uh, but we, we passed, I, I'd say five to six guys on the way down. So I do feel like even, I try to turn a weakness of mine, weakness downhill running into a strength on an off day. Meaning usually I'm a better climber, didn't happen. Therefore, let's work the downhill. Overall, um, was not the day I wanted, not the race I wanted. Learned a lot at my first World Mountain Running Championships. Will I be back? Yeah, I'll be back. But definitely, you know, with fresh legs, it just goes to show everyone, you know, you gotta, special, you gotta specialize your training. Like, I was in great shape going into the Pikes Peak Ascent. Ended up in second uh, behind Joe. 
and uh, I was dialed in and you know did really did pretty well like in the 10653 in Amsterdam because I was pretty dialed in to to flatter road training so it does help to dial in that training all right um, thank you for watching thanks for listening to this recap I will do a 2019 race recap very soon where I just go over kind of the journey that has happened this year which has been amazing thanks to all of your support starting back I think my first race remember the cookie chase 5k in Wash Park back in Denver I think that was my first race so wow if that feels like frankly years ago but um, onward and upward I'm about to go catch the plane and question of the day what um, <laughs> what tips do you have this connects to the lesson number three I just shared what tips do you have for adapting in the middle of a race that is not going your way okay that's the question of the day thank you for being here thanks for watching uh, of course I'm gonna toss it back to both of the race vlogs from this past weekend on the right will be my race and on the left will be the long course race which was just absolutely epic all right there you have it you all the best seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow